and welcome. You're watching your trades on ET now with me, Snehisha, and with me is Priyanka. Priyanka, hi. Uh, what a day we've seen in trade today. Rather subdued and lackluster. Languishing is the term coming in for the Nifty today because we have managed to just close above that 20 to 700 mark. Remember, just a few sessions ago, we had hit 23,000 and 23,100, and now we are back below uh, the 22,800 um, mark, uh, slightly above 22,700. 22,704 is exactly where we've shut shop for the day. Eight tenths of a percent or a one. 80 point cut coming in for the nifty today itself sensex also fallen in tandem almost a one percent cut coming over there as well uh, 660 points lower is where the sensex was but well the real um, you know bleeding sector if i could call it today in our today's trading session was the nifty bank that was down by a solid 1.3 percent and down 640 points uh, was the nifty bank there you have it on your screen a deep shade of red across the banking sector and we'll come to that in a bit as well india wakes uh, was uh, still up above that 24 level so still some volatility is being seen in the street as of now as well but uh, well yes let's come back and talk about uh, nifty bank 1.3 percent lower dragged primarily by icici bank that was lower by 2.2 percent access bank lower two percent hgfc bank also lower one and a half percent so all your large cap banks have been the real uh, big losers that have been dragging nifty bank down today in terms of sectoral moves then, Nifty Pharma was uh, the winner of the day up uh, almost half a percent. You had Gland Pharma, Biocon, Torrent Pharma, Glenmark, DV Slab and Sun Pharma in the green. So the pharma sector continues to gain for a second consecutive day. Nifty Metal also continues to shine because Hindalco has uh, closed above 3.5% on the back of that news that Novellus has gone ahead and, find, uh, and filed uh, the draft of its IPO with the New York Stock Exchange. So that was taken positively by the street and Hindalco has closed up 3 uh, and a half percent on the back of that news flow. You also have Nalco and Hindustan Copper as well. They have also closed up in the greens with gains anywhere between one and two percent. So good moves coming over there as well. Then, well, uh, when you uh, talk about the big losers, of course, Nifty Bank, but that was also followed by Nifty IT, Realty, Energy, FMCG, your PSU banks, autos. All of these sectors have ended the day in the red. So, well, these are your top losers in terms of sectors uh, for today's trading session. When you take a look at the top gainers today, whole host of stocks that have done pretty well for themselves campus active where uh, remember the stock has not been performing uh, well over the last few quarters but has uh, you know reported good set of numbers and the street is rewarding it for the same 18 percent higher as where the stock was today Tagore Real Systems are also above 11%. The entire defense space was up and buzzing yet again today. You had Mazagon Dog that was higher by 10.5%. Uh, Bharat Dynamics has done well 6% higher. Coach and Shipyard, you have um, almost 6% higher coming over there as well. So good moves coming over there. Sumitomo Chemical continues its winning streak up uh, another 9% yesterday. But let's also talk about two uh, stocks that were in focus today. And Suzlon was one of them because that was locked in upper circuit today on the back of two news flows. For First, it, uh, it has won an uh, order for 175 wind turbines of 3.14 megawatt capacity. So that order win is what cheered the stock. But early in the morning, we did have a note coming in from Novama. They have uh, initiated a buy rating on the stock with a target price of 53 and they believe that the company is capable of sustaining its lead in the WTG as well as turnkey uh, EPC execution as well. Positive news coming in on Suzlon on the back of these two results. The stock did pretty well and uh, well, Inox Wind also did pretty well. Uh, Inox Wind, pardon me, was subdued in today's trading session, continued to carry on those losses that it uh, uh, saw yesterday. It was locked in lower circuit yesterday and despite a good note from Noama coming in on Inox Wind, it continues to languish as well. But Priyanka, we had other buzzers in today's trading session as well. Not many have covered those, Nehi, but then, of course, there were two clear reasons. One, Indian uh, markets were jittery, they were nervous, mm -hmm. nervous before election. But let's also consider the macro data because we did track the global uh, weakness in global peers also. And that's one reason because there's a macro data which has to come in this week, that is US CPI. Maybe that is also driving some kind of nervousness also. Uh, but then uh, IT sector completely failed to take cues from NASDAQ, which has already crossed 17K. Maybe we were hopeful that IT could actually uh, stand tall in this time, but then... Uh, uh, there were draggers from this space also. But the buzzing name 
It's of course on the back of numbers like Campus Activewear, top gainer. In fact, you see the broader market, small cap still managed to close in green on the back of these numbers, uh, these uh, stocks only. Campus, Campus Activewear uh, revenue was 5% up, but the PAT was 43% up YNY figures and so was uh, the other numbers. MTR, however, was down 8.5%, uh, majorly on the uh, side of the revenue down and of course there was uh, some, uh, some setback on the front of the other uh, drivers also. But then to track the markets from here, we have Richard Jain uh, to talk us about the, to talk about uh, the levels. But uh, we'll go to Richard uh, after we uh, speak to Srishti. Uh, Srishti, what are the uh, key stocks that you're figuring out here? Because we've clearly break down key support level here. Do you, are you able to highlight any breakout stock also or uh, breakdown stocks are on your radar? Well, yes, first of all, we are highlighting the breakout stocks because amidst the market volatility and the weakness, we have seen one such stock that was holding strong throughout the day and that was AU Small Finance Bank. And I'll also tell you the reason why we have actually spotted this and taken this counter as a breakout stock because you will see that the stock has been uh, retesting its uh, resistance of 650 levels and this was the fourth consecutive time that the stock is trying to make an attempt there. And interestingly, uh, this was after making a... Um, quite a base for itself at around 600 odd rupees levels a bounce exactly from its 20 day moving average and today's move of two two and a half percent was also supported by a long build up on this particular counter so when we are seeing that the index was under pressure AU small finance bank was holding strong and also on the technical front we were seeing that this stock was also retesting it's one of its crucial resistance levels so this is the first stock that we wish to highlight on the breakout side moving on to the next counter that's actually a breakdown stock for today and that is from the large cap space Interglobe Aviation which is down after the earnings and what we are seeing is that the stock is tremendously under pressure for the past four consecutive days and today the stock has actually broken its support of 20 day moving average as well because when the stock was in uptrend you will see that the stock was every time taking its support at its 20 day moving average and whenever the stock actually has to break down this kind of a support level it has to be with a major red candle of a 4% cut is what we have witnessed on Interglobe Aviation today. This was indeed was supported by a short build up on the derivative side. So these are the two stocks that we wish to highlight on the breakout as well as on the breakdown side. Back to you. All right, Srishti, thanks very much. You managed to find a breakout stock for us. That's AU Small Finance and breakdown stock Interglobe, Avi Interglobe Aviation. Of course, the stock has its own dream run also. But then let's go further and get you the word from the wise. The uh, public sector entities continue to be in the spotlight ahead of the big event that is Lok Sabha election outcome. But what are the pockets uh, one uh, is eyeing? Uh, is it defense, rail, power? Kotak AMC's Harsha Upadhyay has all the answers. Within PSUs, we have been quite positive on the defense, uh, uh, entire defense fields uh, within the PSUs. We have been holding uh, several other stocks in the logistics, uh, oil and gas segment, energy, power, all of these segments. So we continue to be uh, uh, quite uh, positive on the entire piece uh, uh, at this point of time. Uh, however, the uniform rally that we saw in PSUs uh, uh, for a good part of 2023 may be behind us. Uh, most of these stocks have reached evaluation levels uh, which, are, which are no more very, very attractive in that sense or uh, very cheap compared to the historical range. Uh, so to that extent, from here on, uh, the delivery on the business growth and, and profitability would be key for uh, sustenance of these uh, uh, performances. All right, well, uh, let's move on from that then. And here's an interesting note from the house of CLSA. They're talking about how 90% of the Modi stocks have outperformed on the back of policy pushed by the government. They also share their list of preferred picks. And Somit is joining us with the highlights of this note. Somit, take it away. Well, uh, to analyze uh, the, or to get the sense of uh, election excitement, uh, what CLSA has done is they have analyzed the FNO universe that is of 183 liquid stocks and what they're seeing out of that is nearly half of the 50 four companies which have uh, perceived as which are perceived as a direct beneficiary of PM Modi's policy are PSUs and remarkably nearly 90% of the Modi stocks have beaten the Nifty in the election focused rally over the past six months while 42% uh, of the remaining stocks uh, well in the remaining half if you see only 42% of the stocks have uh, outperformed so which means that 90% of the Modi stocks have outperformed while 42% of the other stocks have outperformed in the last six months and this may continue even going forward 
if there's a strong election result as per CLSA. Now, in the list, uh, as per their analyst, LNT, ONGC, NHPC, uh, NTPC, PFC, IGL, Mahanagar Gas, Bharti Airtel and Industars and Reliance Industries are the preferred Modi stocks as per their analyst. However, they are saying that this, uh, nar uh, this uh, narrow election theme base may end in the month of June and July and post that in the second half of 2024, they are expecting the market narrative to change and they are believing or they believe that banks have the best risk reward ratio for the second half of calendar year 2024. Now, they like banks for its growths like HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, Access Bank and Indusin Bank and these four banks are already a part of CLSA's India portfolio and they're also saying that a clear pushback on the rate cut expectations has allowed uh, banks in US to outperform but Indian banks if you see on a YTD basis especially the private banks have continued to underperform the market and they're also saying that the, their analysts continue to like Bajaj Finance, Max Financial, Zomato and Dmart also apart from the banking sector that they have just mentioned and they're expecting that to outperform in the second half of this calendar year 2024. Right, that's the modic magic for the markets. Thank you so much for decoding it, uh, Swami. We stay here for a short break. More to come when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Your Trades on ET Now. Let's understand uh, what is the derivative action looking like. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a short built-up trend on Nifty, Bank Nifty both. In fact, VIX had a two years high again. Uh, uh, it's uh, above 24 and that's been causing the uh, reason of volatility also. But then active calls, the active call writing which is happening at 22,800 and we've uh, we've closed below this. So this happens to be the immediate resistance now and uh, the support which lies at 22,500 and 22,600 because maximum of the put buying here. But then we need to really watch out. Two more days to go in this week, uh, uh, Snehi and then of course before the big outcome, the mega outcome. Absolutely and you know tomorrow is the last expiry before that mega outcome you know comes out and the exit polls come out. So lots lots to watch out for yeah. when it comes to levels tomorrow especially. But let's talk about the big story of the day and well that has to be uh, Novellis and Aditya Bidla subsidiary Novellis Inc has filed for IPO in the US offering 45 million shares in a price band of 18 to 21 dollars per share. The company is targeting a valuation of up to 12.6 uh, billion dollars in its US IPO. My colleague uh, Samit is here with more details on that. Samit, take it away. Well, uh, Hindalco definitely will remain in focus on the back of the fact that it's a subsidiary, 100% subsidiary. Novelis has announced much more details about this IPO. Firstly, the price band that they have announced is around 18 to 21 dollar per share, and it's an OFS where uh, Hindalco's uh, arm will be selling around 45 million shares, and there is also a green shoe option of selling additional 6.75 million shares if there's an oversubscription. Uh, now, post IPO, Hindalco will own close to 92.5% stake in Novelis and 91.4% if the over uh, subscription uh, uh, if there is an over subscription in the offer. Now if you look at the valuations given the fact that there are 600 million shares totally in Novelis, the market capitalization on listing could be anywhere between uh, 11 to 13 billion US dollars and given the fact that the company has a net debt of close to 5,300 million US dollars, the enterprise value of uh, Novelis comes to around 16 to 18 billion US dollars. Now this is around 7.3 to 8.1 times its FY26 EBITDA uh, which is slightly higher than what the street has been estimating anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5 uh, FY26 EBITDA. So the valuations are favorable uh, for this IPO. Uh, now from this uh, IPO uh, what Hindalco will get is anywhere between 810 uh, uh, 2000 million US, uh, 1100 million US dollars depending on how many shares get subscribed and and what price they are finally issuing these uh, shares now the key question here is how will hindalco utilize this proceeds given the fa uh, given the fact that hindalco's uh, domestic business is a net cash company it does not require cash for uh, its uh, capital expenditure and uh, uh, so how will uh, this com how will hindalco actually utilize this proceeds given the fact uh, they also will not be putting in this money into vodafone idea so most likely these funds could be utilized by the company for an organic or an inorganic expansion. So keep an eye out for Hindalco. Most likely post uh, the IPO is concluded, there could be some expansion uh, uh, expansion uh, notice coming in uh, from Hindalco uh, going forward. 
Thanks, Somir. And we do remember the conference call also. Hindalko mentioned about uh, uh, ongoing cam campex also for the uh, coming year. So let's see, maybe the proceeds use are used there. But the Nivama came up with a note and that to be initiating a buy stance for two companies, two energy companies, stocks like Inox Wind and Suzlon Energy. Let's go across to Anisha for more details on what their key takeaways are in this note. Anisha, over to you. Oh, well, yes, uh, we are seeing both the wind turbine companies, which is Inox uh, Wind as well as Suzlon uh, Energy, doing quite well in the trading session. And that after Nuwama initiated coverage on these counters. And Nuwama's thesis is largely dependent on the kind of renewable energy targets that the country is seeing and the fact that wind energy is likely to grow. So they talk about how India is traversing through a high voltage uh, phase in its growth. There is a peak deficit, supply deficit of around 4%. And the fact that wind complements that gap very nicely because during the day of course solar is there to complement the demand which is there and meet the supply but in the evenings country might have to resort to wind which is the best time for it to increase its supply and also be able to manage the supply demand deficit to add to that the fact that the overall uh, you know renewable purchase obligation from the wind specific sector has been targeted at seven percent means that there's enough demand and off takers available if the wind energy does go up also, of course, if we go by ICRA estimates, they are talking about how commercial and industrial demand would likely quintuple from 15 gigawatt in FY23 all the way to 78 gigawatt. And if wind capacity has to be added and the country's overall uh, you know, renewable focus is likely to continue, who are the best beneficiaries? The clear answer is Suzanon Energy as well as Inox India because these are the key players which are there in the Indian markets as the wind turbine makers and the EMM players. EPC players as well as the ONM players who likely benefit from that and that's the reason they have initiated coverage on these counters. For Inox Wind, they have set the target price at 193, so sizable uptick there. And for Suzdown Energy as well, they're expecting the order book PAT CGR to be 21% and 61% respectively over the next three to four years and that's why they've set the target price for 53. In fact, incidentally, we were speaking with the management of Suzdown yesterday. They talked about how land acquisition continues to be an issue but it's not anyway comparable to the problems of last cycle because this time around they've learned the lessons and that's why the execution cycles have been designed in a way that it takes care of all those land acquisition issues etc they are targeting fy25 to be a turnaround year because earlier of course debt was plaguing them and all of these issues will get sorted out over the next two to three years in fact listen in to a sound bite of that conversation we had with the management of susan energy just yesterday our estimates uh, as a company is that the country would add about uh, uh, 5 gigawatts in FY25, uh, therefore another 50% increase from FY24. Now, from a Suzlon perspective, of course, uh, you know, uh, historically or in, on FY24, we've had a 27% market share um, and our endeavor would be to at least, uh, you know, meet that market share and if not, uh, increase the market share. Uh, and our O&M business, uh, uh, you know, will continue inflationary growth on the top line um, and uh, deliver healthy margins close to about 40%. So depending on the volumes that we end up at uh, in FY25, I think, uh, you know, we should be looking at a much stronger uh, uh, balance sheet at the end of uh, this fiscal year. Well, that's the word coming in from the management of Sue's Lawn. That stock did pretty well today, locked uh, more than 4.8% in upper circuit. But let's go across to my colleague Achesha, who's waiting by with a list of yet, um, you know, more stocks that were buzzing in today's trading session, either on the back of their quarter for numbers or their respective news flows. Achesha, take it away. Well, yes, let's start off with a couple of earnings candidates then and uh, Campus Activewear is at the top of that list. The stock was up nearly 18% by the end of today's trading session on the back of very good set of numbers that the company reported. Revenues up 5%, PAT up 43% and as far as margins are concerned, they expanded to 17.6% versus 16.3% that the company reported same time last year. So on the back of very good set of numbers that the company reported, the stock was up nearly 18.0%. On the flip side, we had MTAR Tech. The stock was down 11%. Weak set of numbers, revenues declined 27%. PAT declined 85% and margins also contracted a whole lot. So EBITDA margins contracted to just 12.5% versus 25% that the company reported same time last year and the stock was taking a beat on the back of weak set of numbers. We also had PNB Housing Finance on the back of that block deal that took place. The stock was down nearly 6%. Uh, 
um, uh, some PE firms are likely to have sold stake in this counter and about 2.7% equity changed hands via block deal and the stock was declining nearly 6% today. Lastly, let's also talk about IRCTC. The stock was down nearly 3.5%. Numbers were below estimates, so revenues grew by about 20% on a year-on-year -year basis. But as far as margins are concerned, they contracted. So margins came in at 31.4% versus 33.6% that the company had reported same time last year. So on the back of week set of numbers, we also had IRCTC, which was declining nearly 5% in trade today. Thanks very much, Ashesha, for all that input. Uh, Apollo Hospital is all set to report its Q4 earnings. Uh, and let's go across to Srishti to get all the details. Uh, what is the street expectation looking like? So a decent set is expected from Apollo Hospital this time around because on a sequential basis we are expecting just the flattish growth uh, for the company while on a YOY basis there could be a double digit growth across the numbers. Why so a flattish growth we are expecting because on the occupancy level, the ARPOV numbers, we are not expecting a significant jump over there and that could contribute to the numbers. So firstly on to the revenue figure, we are expecting 4,907 crores in the top line. EBITDA is expected at 626 crores and the margins are also expected to be flat sequentially at 12.8 percent and lastly on to the profit figure 253 crores is what we are expecting now looking at the factors at play and the growth in the ARPOB as well as their health cooperations could boost the earnings this time around but uh, the, other than that the primary care and the diagnostics is also expected to support the earnings on the back of a better operational performance if we talk about their hospital business that is expected to show a growth of 13 percent on a YY basis but the hospital margins are expected to be down about about 20 basis points on a sequential basis. The occupancy is also expected to remain flat sequentially at 66% this time around while the AHLL business is expected to report a 20% growth on a YOY basis. So not a great set expected from Apollo Hospitals but apart from that from the management commentary we will be definitely watching out for the updates on the capacity expansions at the Pune, Hyderabad as well as their Kolkata and Bengaluru facility and how these some of the newly ad added capacities are helping in into the numbers. So all eyes on Apollo Hospitals. Okay, all eyes will be on Apollo Hospitals tomorrow, the last Nifty 50 company to report its quarter for earnings. And that's all you can expect and the factors to watch out for when it comes to Apollo Hospitals. But Priyanka, well, uh, lots of cues to watch out for tomorrow in terms of uh, the US coming in. You have GDP as well as initial jobless claims. Important numbers to watch out for. But uh, well, with that, it's a, uh, it's a good bye from Priyanka, me and the entire team that put this show together. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.